Hey, what's shaking, everyone? So we got another fun topic here today. In my opinion, there's a new YouTube change that's coming out, and uh, it really looks like they're trying to, I don't know, take over for TV. Everything that they're doing lately is bonkers. So it was a great time for me to hop in and uh, throw my two cents out there because it looks like I might be getting uh, the brunt of this new block. But, uh Man, before we get too depressing, I'll try to keep it a little bit light. I just want to thank everybody out there who's been tuning in for my opinions on the news and sports and everything else that I like to cover on this channel. The channel's only been live for a month, but the support has been even greater than I anticipated. I just thought I'd be talking to myself and nobody else, but uh, man, everybody who's clicked on this channel, I greatly appreciate every single one of you for checking this stuff out and if there's anything that you'd like for me to talk about, cover, and dissect in the future, feel free to drop it down in that comment section down below. And while you're down there, if you don't mind hitting that subscribe button and smashing the like button, geez, with these new changes here, uh, my, co my content's going to be, uh, could potentially be tough to find here. I'm not going to be so doomerific as uh, some other larger channels tend to be. So, for those of you who don't know, this just dropped freaking earlier today YouTube AI to automatically block videos that violate age restrictions now we've seen these moves before we seen there's been two adpocalypse incidences in the past few years and what that means is the first one I believe was spurred on by a bunch of pedophiles going on to kids channels dropping little hints when they could see something arousing just some real sick shit and then the i believe it was the new york times or the washington post one of those uh bastions of journalism wrote up a big thing about how youtube is promoting this type of activity and smearing everybody on the platform and a bunch of the larger uh, sponsors uh jump ship at that point and everybody's ad revenue went significantly down to a point where it's uh not really terribly tenable for most smaller channels. I And <laughs> then most recently, about 18, 20 months ago, um, once again, the strike back of the legacy outlets, the social justice ran outlets, when um, Steven Crowder called out one of their journalists as being a uh, somewhat of a homosexual, which is... Um, generous because his opinions were general shit but uh, without getting too deep into that because I'm not terribly familiar of what everything went down but I know that was the inciting point and that uh, yeah further diminished it peeled off a bunch of other sponsors and uh, made ad revenues uh, and a bunch of other content policies just that much tighter and every time that they do this they make the internet more sanitized because you look back to when YouTube was first started or even when it was first purchased by Google. It was just run by a couple of college kids and everything short of porn and snuff videos you could find on YouTube. And it was fucking great. It was a great time to search on YouTube. People were cussing up a storm, dropping fucking just real hilarious cutting edge shit that you would not find on television. And it got those big television firms scared and they immediately saw YouTube as a threat that it is the internet at large is a threat that it is and started to chip away at YouTube and their ownership so they start putting little incremental policies into place because we wouldn't have this you know basically a barren wasteland of sponsorship at this point as for YouTube, as for Google AdSense, and it's so sanitized to a point where you can't really say fuck shit, piss cunt, any of George Carlin's seven dirty words, and you immediately get flagged or demonetized. Or it's to a point now, if you share anything, you know, right leaning, you risk having your stuff censored, and now. Like it says here, YouTube AI to automatically block videos that violate age restrictions. So, I know I've set the table fairly well enough, but let's take a look at what they're actually going to be doing. 
YouTube will use machine learning to automatically apply age restrictions on videos, which has never worked out terribly. Anybody who is familiar with the flagging system that YouTube or Facebook or Twitter has that's all automated and isn't even peer-reviewed, I was I stuttered on that for a minute because I remember the Project Veritas videos that came out for against Facebook when they were exposing the conservative bias and even some of those human flaggers are not flaggers. Flaggers with an L. <laughs> Even some of them aren't terribly reliable because they are influenced heavily by the, well, hyperpartisan culture, we'll put it to say the least. So, and then there's many instances of copyright claims, DMCA claims, when anything, especially on YouTube, becomes automated. So, what these age restrictions are, you have to be signed into YouTube and your account has to be owned and operated by somebody over the age of 18. Now, if you just go punch up YouTube.com on a... Just take the library computer. Nobody goes to the fucking libraries. I don't even think they're fucking open right now. Good example. Anyways, we all know that there's free computers to use at the library anyway, so it's an apt analogy. So if you go in there and you don't want to give up any of your information to what could only be presumed as a bugged or a compromised computer, and you just want to log in and watch, hopefully, a Don Consuelo video, and... If YouTube's algorithm deems any of my policies or the way that I like to speak, because on this channel, free speech is paramount, and I'm going to say some colorful colorful words, sometimes try to rush over top of them and end up stuttering my words, and that's fine too. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, if I get artificially flagged, you guys can't watch that unless you log in and you're over the age of 18, and I know most of my audience is over 18, but, fuck man, these ideas, not just even held by me, guys out there that I really enjoy and, you know, take inspiration from, like Styx Hexenhammer, uh, Tim Pool, the Razor Fist for sure, they're all going to get, you know, slapped with these age restrictions and it's going to make YouTube a, well, at least not fun platform, but, uh, Fuck, they're really trying super hard to become totally unviable. Now let's just see what else goes down here. Creators who believe their videos were unblocked fairly can appeal. And we've all heard stories of how quick and expedient that appeals pro process is, especially when it comes to copyright claims or any other false flagging attempts, which the platform is rampant with. Especially if you uh, espouse opinions that I do, you tend to get false flagged so you'll get false flagged on this and then end up in some kind of weeks long battle potentially I'm not you know as much as I brought up here in the first few minutes I'm not terribly concerned by this this is another one of those big asks a few years ago YouTube tried to run out this program and it was supposed to be a community based guidelines where they were going to have special flaggers in charge people who are going to look at different content and flag it as appropriate or inappropriate as they deemed fit and it was wildly unpop unpopular it was um the announcement video i forget the proper verbiage i just immediately thought of this when i was ranting about the video and yeah it looks like most terrible ideas on the left, like you can take a look at that cuties video that I did a couple weeks back. Um, originally, pedophilia was so totally taboo, Salon had to retract and reissue a censored version of the original article. And not to compare YouTube with pedophiles, but that's what they did with that original flagging program. It went undercover for a while, and... Now it's just been rolled back incrementally. And that tends to be a very popular method of rolling out the leftist policies. I don't know if you're familiar... This is getting very off topic, but it's central to the point that I'm trying to make. That YouTube is effectively trying to become the TV alternative. You look at all of their branding, it looks like Netflix. You look at every large YouTube channel like we'll just take a look here like look at CNN's YouTube channel 
nearly 11 million subscribers. Hey, good on them. But I also know the fact that they're... Oh, geez. Uh, what does a primetime show pull in? Less than a million viewers? Like, I got a cable box hooked up to this, or this rig that I'm recording on. I haven't turned it on in years. Literally. Probably been... Probably been a good year and a half since I've watched any kind of television because it's all just become so unwatchable, so sanitized. And that's what YouTube's doing. And they're doing that through pushing these old legacy media outlets, like how I highlighted 10.7 million subscribers. Great on them. Hopefully, I get to be that size one day. But look at their interactions. Like this 55,000. I. 116 800,000 like they aren't getting even a tenth of their subscriber base to interact with anything recently and we're going back geez okay let's just uh yeah sure go back two weeks anything on here oh there's one 1 1.2 million and that is not even 10 percent and yet you go on the main you go on your home feed and you watch any sort of political com content like the stuff I push out or the people that I mentioned earlier, you're going to get in the recommended spot or, uh, to the side. Undeniably, you're going to be getting corporate sources because they're safe. Because their clips are straight off of their shows. They're sanitized interviews that people grew tired of and turned to YouTube as the alternative. And YouTube is trying their fucking damnedest with all of these little incremental evil policies to become the new TV alternative. And my thumbnail for this video is perfectly my opinion. It's an outdated idea that YouTube is trying to force itself into because, hey, if it's been successful before, it'll be successful again. And when YouTube was rocking at its absolute peak, probably about, what, 10 years ago? When it was more or less the Wild West, people were excited to upload, people were excited to watch. And now, they have to, in order to upload anything, you have to fill out everything. Like, it's fucking, like you're applying for your driver's license. You have to fill out this form and make sure that it adheres to a bunch of different policies. And if it does or if it doesn't, they decide whether or not they're going to push it out. doesn't matter if it's quality or not. You get these fucking gaming channels that are just screams over and over again. And they get tremendous amount of interaction. Because, hey, they don't say fuck. They don't say shit. They don't call Julia Louise Dreyfus a fucking withered up old snatch. I'll do it. Because free speech is important to me. And it's... Seemingly is less and less important to YouTube, but it's not the monopoly on sanitization is not exclusively reserved for YouTube. I've also got yeah, Twitter, of course, wants to jump in. Of course, Facebook, too. That's the next that's the next article. But Google and Twitter vow to block voting misinformation. And what that means is, well, I've referenced it before in several different videos. If Trump claims on the night of election, if he claims on November 3rd that there is a landslide, which I think is highly possible, and hey, I've won re-election, Twitter is going to take down his tweet. It says so right here. Messaging platforms expect, expect a flood of false claims and misleading posts ahead of the November, November vote. Twitter said it plans to more aggressively label and remove election-related tweets that are inaccurate. Now, you post anything outside of the CDC or WHO regulations in regards to co yeah, coronavirus as well, and they flag it. They'll at least hide it behind a wall where you have to click view and be signed in, just like these age restrictions, in order to view it, even if it's seemingly innocuous. There are Trump tweets in regards to mail-in voting, which are... Perfectly descriptive of how mail-in voting works. If you don't, if you receive your mail-in ballot and you send it back out, and if it's not counted by November third, 
you can vote in person because they can verify whether or not your ballot has been received in the mail and you can vote in person. And if you vote in person, then when your mail-in vote is received, it will not be counted. One person, one vote. That is the done and dusted you know, standard in which the United States operates. And that was vote that was flagged by Twitter as a voting misinformation. Where's the misinformation? And that's what they're going to be doing. And Facebook is taking it a step further. They are pulling any sort of election related, I do believe advertisements, the two weeks leading up to the election. It could be a little bit more, but I'm pretty sure it's at least two weeks. And what they did today, Facebook on Twitter, on Tuesday, Facebook on Twitter, I'm sure they have a Twitter page, who knows, they're all, fuck it, it's just a big incestuous relationship, guys. It's all that Silicon Valley horseshit, and I don't want to get too far off on any more of a tangent than I already have. Facebook on Tuesday said that it had shut down more than 150 fake accounts it determined were run from China, including accounts posting about November's U.S. presidential election. Facebook said the scale of the operation was small. Well, it didn't stop them from pushing that Russia probe for, what, three years? But it was the first time the company had made public details about an operation it found to be run from China that had been posting about the U.S. election. So they'll push this as the big boogeyman. Uh, there won't be any proof out. There's barely any proof out in this article either. They're just going to use it to slander Trump. Trump will make a post about it. This is not true. I have nothing to do with it. And it'll get flagged by Twitter. Because they already said that they're going to be flagging any sort of misinformation. They never specify their parameters of what they mean by misinformation or fake. It's just at the discretion of the arbiters of the public square. Nowadays, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, they are all the town square. Especially under these erroneous lockdowns which are being deemed unconstitutional uh, more and more by the day which is mm, top tier shit for me the digital town square is all we have left and those arbiters out there of it are aggressively left leaning have policies in their terms of service which cater to one side of the ideology and not the other this, the reason I'm making this today is just showing you that there is a slippery slope and creators out there need to stand up for their platform. YouTube is, was great. YouTube still has the propensity to be great. I nearly exclusively watch online content because I believe it to be the greatest for greatest source of information the greatest source of entertainment as well and I want it to be that way I want it I want an alternative to the humdrum mundality that is modern day media and that's why I threw my hat in the ring anyways this has gone on longer than I anticipated but Thanks for tuning in for as long as you have. Hopefully you made it this far. I really appreciate it, guys. And uh, really use your support going forward. And everybody who has tuned in, hey, thank you very, very, very much. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Anyways, guys, I'll leave it there. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you guys to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.